This video is in response to several recent questions and is intended to offer some guidance about how to code RCD observations and issues when completing an electrical installation condition report and also about performing the correct tests on the different types of RCD, in particular types AC and type A. Questions such as what is the correct observation code for having no RCD installed? Why are some RCD issues given a code 2 and others a code 3? And should type AC RCDs always be given a code C2? We can begin with a reminder about the different EICR observation codes. You must understand how these are structured to have any chance of selecting the correct codes. There are four possible observation codes, plus a state of non-observed. These are shown here, and they also appear on the EICR reporting sheet, which you will find on page 519 of the Brown Wiring Regulations book. All references in this video concern Amendment 2 of the regulations. The outcome of an electrical installation condition report can be either satisfactory or unsatisfactory. If the observation codes are only C3, or there are no observations, then the installation is satisfactory for continued use. But, if there are any C1, C2 or FI observations, then the condition of the installation is automatically deemed unsatisfactory, meaning that remedial action is required to bring it up to the required standard. There is no minimum number of C1s, C2s or FIs just one will make it unsatisfactory. Briefly, what would trigger a C1 code? A C1 is a basic protection issue. It is immediately dangerous. One simple action, just touching the observed problem, may result in an electric shock or fire. Things such as exposed and uninsulated life conductors and terminals that can be touched. Incorrect polarity at the point of use, especially any live wire reversed with the earth or CPC. Broken wiring accessories that give access to live parts. Or live metallic parts in the installation, perhaps caused by damaged cables or incorrect terminations. I always think of the one in C1 as being just one action to get an electric shock. There is the exposed conductor, there is the danger, one action, touch it. C2 codes generally relate to fault protection issues. If a fault occurs, things are either not in place or not working as they should be in order to eliminate the fault before it can cause an electric shock or to prevent that fault from causing a danger. We say it is not immediately dangerous, but it could be dangerous if a fault occurred, such as an RCD that fails to operate in the required time. No 30 milliamp RCD for socket outlets that are likely to be used for the supply of outdoor equipment, for example lawn mowers, patio equipment, etc. Perhaps no connection to the means of earthing, or class 1 lighting with no CPC. Think of two things that need to happen in order to receive an electric shock. For example, first, the RCD is faulty, it doesn't work, and then second, an earth fault occurs that needs the RCD to operate, and of course, it doesn't. Two things, a C2. C3s are a little different. These are often conformity or compliance issues. This is usually where installations are installed to older versions of the wiring regulations to which they conformed at the time of installation. But the current regulations suggest that improvement is possible. A good example is having no 30 milliamp RCD for socket outlets that are used only inside the building. At the time of the installation, Perhaps way back in the early 70s, RCDs were not common items. The socket circuit has never been altered, never been upgraded or added to. It is still as it was when installed. Or an ELCB, an earth leakage circuit breaker, at the origin of a TT system. These are now outdated, but they are still out there. And in the late 60s and early 70s, it was common to have no CPC for Class 2 lighting circuits. Look at C3 this way. It complied with the regulations when it was installed, and it still complies with those same regulations, the ones it was installed to, in terms of function, safety and condition. 
It worked then, it is still working now, but it can be improved. And lastly, FI. The inspector has decided that further investigation is required for part of the installation. The outcome for this part of the inspection process is currently unknown. This could be because the consumer unit has mixed manufacturer parts and their compatibility needs to be checked before making a decision. Or the inspector suspects that certain components may have been subject to a product safety recall and confirmation must be sought before assigning a code. It is any issue where an observation code cannot be given without some additional activity and where this may lead to C1 or C2 codes. This video is about RCDs, so let's now look at what issues we might have with different types of RCDs. The regulations specify certain types of RCD for certain locations or situations. For example, solar photovoltaic installations, medical locations, etc. And then, for other installations, the regulations only give general guidance. To begin, this chart shows the different types of RCD, types A, C, A, F or B, and the blue boxes show the different types of waveforms they will monitor and respond to. With the advent of green energy saving and smart technology, and with so many household appliances and lighting circuits interacting with the user, there are many types of signals being generated within the installation. No longer is it a simple, smooth AC waveform. Most situations in the wiring regulations will specify an RCD that meets the requirements of regulation 415.1.1 and this is a standard 30 milliamp RCD. The designer, inspector or installer, whoever, should decide if this should be a type AC or a type A. Type AC were common for several decades and with smart technology in most homes now, a type A is often a more appropriate RCD type. A type A will respond to a greater variety of fault waveforms. In fact, some manufacturers now only supply new consumer units with type A RCDs. The regulations also tell us that some installations shall have a particular type of RCD. Shall means must, no options, no choice, do it. For example, medical locations, section 701. In certain medical locations, the RCD shall be type A, no choice. For other medical locations, it is a type B or type F. In some other parts of a medical location, type AC RCDs shall not be used, they are not allowed. And even in others, it is specified that no RCDs shall be used. So you could have different RCD requirements in different parts of just one building. You need to know the regulations that affect the installation that you are working on. A couple of other installations to be aware of. Take a look at solar photovoltaic installations. Section 712 in the book and regulation 712.531.3.5.1. It specifies a type B RCD unless certain conditions exist. And then we have Electric Vehicles, Section 722, where Regulation 722.531.3.101 tells us that Type A, Type F or Type B are the only RCD types to use. A quick check of the regulations is always beneficial. Many people ask why. If it's the same AC electricity going into every installation, then how can the waveform be affected by what is happening at the load end. Let's use a transformer for a lamp as an example. This transformer has a step down ratio of 10 to 1. So 230 volts is the supply side and just 23 volts on the output to the 50 watt lamp. Notice that the watts across the transformer stay the same and the primary and secondary voltages stay the same. 230 volts input and 23 volts output. Power law tells us that if the wattage alters, then it must be the current that changes. There is nothing else. It is the output side that decides what happens at the input side. Follow the arrows. 50 watts divided by 23 volts tells us that the lamp is consuming 2.17 amps. But what has that done to the current on the primary or input side? We have the same 50 watts, but this time 
divided by 230 volts and a current demand of just 0 0.217 amps, ignoring any losses in the transformer. Any changes in the output current will make a change to the input current. A smooth AC current output, for example a filament lamp, will cause a smooth AC current demand on the input. The input will always match what is happening at the output, so the RCD sees a smooth AC waveform. RCDs respond to current and a pulse current at the output, for example where we use rectified DC for an LED lamp, this will cause a pulsed current demand on the input. We call this waveform pulsed DC. It is using just the positive half cycles of the waveform and this is what the RCD sees. Looking at type AC and type A RCDs, they will be marked with the symbols shown here. They are self-explanatory. The AC type only responds to AC waveforms, whereas the type A responds to AC waveforms and to pulsed DC. So what do the regulations say? Take a look at page 237 of the Wiring Regulations book. Section 643.8 on page 237 states that Regardless of the type, it must trip within 300 milliseconds, 0 0.3 seconds, with a test current of 1 times the RCD rated residual current. For a 30 milliamp RCD, all that the regulations expect you to do is to test the RCD on the AC setting at 30 milliamps and the tripping time should be 300 milliseconds or less. Then press the test button and show that the test mechanism is functioning correctly. And that is it. But as a skilled person, we should do more and there is a sequence of tests to follow. It's important that the person carrying out the tests has the appropriate test equipment to carry out all the required tests proficiently. This chart compares the tests for type AC and type A RCDs. While some of the much older test meters can test AC devices, they may not be able to test type A RCDs. Begin with the type AC RCD test sequence. Remember that these are live tests and the relevant precautions for safety must be followed. Set the test meter to type AC, the symbol as shown above. Carry out five tests, times a half, times one, and times five of the tripping current, or I delta N, also sometimes shown as a half I, times one I, and times five I. The one times and five times test should each be carried out twice, once with the meter set to zero degrees, and then with the meter set to 180 degrees, as shown on the next slide. Record the results as you test. If you write it down, you don't have to remember it. This chart shows the five tests and some typical test results in blue. For the times half test of the rated current, the meter holds the test signal for two seconds and the RCD should not trip. Many meters show 1999 milliseconds, the most they can display. This is equivalent to two seconds. Then a times 1 at 0 degrees and 180 degrees and a times 5 at 0 and 180 degrees as well. We should choose the worst case tripping time, the biggest number and record this on the schedule of test results along with a tick to show that the test button works. Some test certificates by NAPIT, NIC, EIC etc will have two columns for the tripping time a times one column and a times five column, in which case choose the worst case for times one and the worst case for times five. To test a type A RCD, you will complete 10 tests in total. Complete the five tests exactly as for a type AC RCD, and then set the test meter to type A, as shown in the symbol above, and repeat all the five tests on this A setting making a note of the results as you go. These might be typical results for the type A tests. You should now have two sets of test results for the one type A RCD. A set of type AC results and a set of type A results. Now choose the worst case results, the highest readings for the schedule of test results. And remember to press the T for test button. The test examples in this video are based on the MEGA 1721, 
which will test all RCD types. But some meters use a variable user adjustable current setting when set to type A as shown here. Route 2 times 30 milliamps is 42 milliamps and you will need to be set to 50 milliamps for a times 1 test. For the times 5 test, Route 2 times 150 milliamps is 212 milliamps and only by setting your test meter to 250 milliamps or 0.25 amps will you achieve a result. The standard 150 milliamp output is not enough. Follow the user instructions for your own particular meter. Many electricians have returned to type A RCDs in the mistaken belief that the RCD is faulty. It's not faulty, it's looking for a test current of 250 milliamps and the meter has been set wrong. So in summary, is an RCD required by the regulations? If a socket outlet is likely to supply outdoor equipment, then an RCD must be installed. No RCD, then C2. Any installed RCD that fails to operate in accordance with the requirements of the regulations is also a C2. A socket outlet circuit in an older installation has no RCD and is never likely to supply outdoor equipment, it supplies upstairs circuits only for example, then this is a C3. If, in the inspector's professional opinion, the type AC RCD should be replaced with a type A, but there is nothing in the regulations, then this would be a C3, improvement recommended. However, if the regulations state that a certain type of RCD shall be installed, and it isn't, then this would be a code C2. Take a look at the wiring regulations, page 18, and familiarise yourself with what the actual wording used actually means. Shall be is a must do, there is no option, just to do it. Whereas should be is a recommendation, there are some options, some choices available. This little chart may help with the RCD observation codes that we've discussed in this video and may serve as a useful guide for you. As with all observation codes, it's up to the inspector on the day. They can see what is in front of them, they can see what the circuit or installation is being used for, they make the decision. Reviewing the test sequence for a type AC RCD, we should set the test meter to type AC, test at times a half I for no trip, test at times one I at zero degrees, it must trip within 300 milliseconds. Test at times 1i and 180 degrees and it must trip within 300 milliseconds. Now test at 5i and 0 degrees and expect it to trip within 40 milliseconds. And then test at 5i and 180 degrees and again it must trip within 40 milliseconds. Press the T or test button and the RCD should trip. Record the highest test result, the worst case, on the schedule of test results. And for a type A RCD, we have two full sets of tests to do, and the path to follow is to first complete all the type AC tests and note the test results, and then set the test meter to type A and repeat all five tests and again note the results. Test at half I for no trip, test at times one and zero degrees, it must trip within 300 milliseconds, test at times one, and 180 degrees and expect you to trip again within 300 milliseconds. Test at times 5i and 0 degrees and to trip within 40 milliseconds. And lastly, test at 5i and 180 degrees, again tripping within 40 milliseconds. Record the highest test result of either sequence on the schedule of test results. Thank you for watching this video, it's very much appreciated and we hope you've added some more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, lots of videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.